Hello and welcome in today's session. Today, we have chosen the topic solid waste management for discussion. Since the beginning, humankind has been generating waste, be it the bones and other parts of animals they slaughtered for their food or the wood they cut to make their carts. With the progress of civilization, the waste generation grew more complex in nature. At the end of the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution saw the rise of the world of consumers. Not only did the air get more and more polluted, but the earth itself became more polluted with the generation of non-biodegradable solid waste. The growth of the world's population, increasing urbanization, rising standards of living, and rapid developments in technology have all contributed to an increase in both the amount and the variety of solid waste generated by industrial, domestic, and other activities. Even domestic solid waste has become a health hazard in many developing countries as a result of careless handling and a failure to organize appropriate solid waste collection schemes. Thus, increase in population and urbanization is largely responsible for the increase in solid waste generation. Garbage is generally referred to waste and is also termed as rubbish, trash, junk, and unwanted and undesired material. Litter refers to waste disposed of improperly. As for the Municipal Solid Waste Management and Handling Rule 2000, garbage is defined as municipal solid waste, which includes commercial and residential wastes generated in a municipal or notified areas in either solid or semi-solid form, excluding industrial hazardous wastes, but including treated biomedical wastes. Causes of Solid Waste Generation Human and animal activities generate different kinds of waste and are generally in solid form and may cause pollution of land, water, and air unless treated and disposed of. Some of the main causes of solid waste generation are population increase, growing urbanization, industry, mining and transport. Types of solid waste Solid waste can be classified into different types depending on their source. Household waste is generally classified as municipal waste, industrial waste as hazardous waste, and biomedical waste or hospital waste as infectious waste. Municipal solid waste. Municipal solid waste consists of household waste, construction and demolition debris, sanitation residue, and waste from streets. This garbage is generated mainly from residential and commercial complexes. With rising urbanization and change in lifestyle and food habits, the amount of municipal solid waste has been increasing rapidly and its composition changing. More than 25% of the municipal solid waste is not collected at all. 70% of the Indian cities lack adequate capacity to transport it and there are no sanitary landfills that could dispose the waste properly. The existing landfills are neither well equipped nor well managed and are not lined properly to protect against contamination of soil and groundwater. The annual per capita generation of municipal waste in India is 150 to 200 kilograms. In India, more than 1400 square kilometers of land, which is the size of the city of Delhi, would be required to dispose of solid waste by the year 2047. Composition of municipal solid waste in India. In India, the biodegradable portion dominates the bulk of municipal solid waste. Generally, Biodegradable portion is mainly due to food and yard waste, 
With rising urbanization and change in lifestyle and food habits, the amount of municipal solid waste has been increasing rapidly and its composition change. There are different categories of waste generated. Each take their own time to degenerate. For example, organic waste such as vegetable and fruit peels, leftover foodstuff, etc. A week or two, paper, 10 to 30 days, cotton cloth, 2 to 5 months, wood, 10 to 15 years, woolen item, 1 year, tin, aluminium and other metal items such as cans, etc., 100 to 500 years. Plastic bags, 1 million year. Now, the industrial waste. The major generators of industrial solid waste are the thermal power plants producing coal ash, the integrated iron and steel mills producing blast furnace slag and steel melting slag. Non-ferrous industries like aluminium, zinc and copper producing red mud and tilling. Sugar industries generating press mud, pulp and paper industries producing lime or fertilizer and allied industries producing gypsum. Industrial waste as hazardous waste, biomedical waste as infectious. Modern society produces large quantities of hazardous waste that are generated by chemical manufacturing companies, petroleum refineries, paper mills, smelters, and other industries. Hazardous wastes are those that can cause harm to humans or the environment. Wastes are normally classified as hazardous waste when they cause or significantly contribute to an increase in mortality or an increase in serious irreversible or incapacitating reversible illness or pose a substantial present or potential hazard to human health or the environment when improperly treated, stored, transported or disposed of. Challenging waste plastics. Plastic with its exclusively qualities of being light yet strong and economical has invaded every aspect of our day-to-day -day life. It has many advantages. It's durable, light, easy to mold and can be adopted to different user requirements. Once hailed as a wonder material, plastic is now a serious worldwide environmental and health concern, essentially due to its non-biodegradable nature. In India, the plastic industry is growing phenomenally. Solid Waste Management Solid waste management encompasses the planning, design, financing, construction and operation of facilities for segregation, collection, storage, transportation, processing, treatment, recycling and final disposal of the residual solid waste material. A typical waste management system in a low or middle income country like India includes the following elements. Waste generation and storage segregation, reuse and recycling at the household level. Primary waste collection and transport to a transfer station or community bin, street sweeping and cleansing of public places, management of the transfer station or community bin, secondary collection and transport to the waste disposal site, waste disposal in landfills, but in most of the Indian cities, open dumping is the common practice that is adversely affecting the environment and public health. Some are the main control measures of urban industrial waste, which are generally used everywhere, includes the following components. Segregation, source reduction, resource recovery, recycling, disposal, etc. Now let's talk about segregation. Household waste should be separated daily into different bags for the different categories of waste such as wet and dry waste which should be disposed of separately. One should also keep a bin for toxic wastes such as medicines, 
batteries, dried paint, old bulbs, and dried shoe polish, etc. Wet waste, which consists of leftover foodstuff, vegetable peels, etc., should be put in a compost pit and the compost could be used as manure in the garden. Dry waste consisting of cans, aluminum foils, plastics, metal, glass, and paper could be recycled. If we do not dispose of the waste in a more systematic manner, more than 1400 square kilometer of land, which is the size of the city of Delhi, would be required in the country by the year 2047 to dispose it of. Door-to-door -door collection of waste is another method of segregation, but it is not a common practice as yet in India, except in the metros, where some private organizations are doing such a work. The role of the rag pickers. Rag pickers are the people who are actually going through the garbage bins to pick up the rags. These rag pickers, women, children, and men, from the lowest rung in the society are a common sight in most cities and towns around the country. Rag pickers contribute a great deal to waste management as they squinge the recyclable matter, thereby saving the municipality of the costs and time of collecting and transporting this to the dumps. The rag picker has a special role to play in the segregation of waste in India. He is one of the focal points for the recycling of waste. Source reduction. Source reduction is one of the fundamental ways to reduce waste. Using less material when making a product, reuse of products on site, designing products or packaging to reduce their quantity can do this. On an individual level, we can reduce the use of unnecessary items while shopping, buy items with minimal packaging, avoid buying disposable items, and also avoid asking for plastic curry bags. Resource recovery. Numerous thermal processes, now in various stages of development, recover energy in one form or the another. These systems fall into two groups, combustion process and pyrolysis process. Recycling. Recycling involves the collection of used and discarded material, processing these materials and making them into new products. Thus, recycling is reusing some components of the waste that may have some economic value. Recycling has readily visible benefits such as conservation of resource reduction in energy used during manufacture and reducing pollution levels. It reduces the amount of waste that is thrown into the community dustbins, thereby making the environment cleaner. The steps involved in the process prior to recycling include collection of waste from doorsteps, commercial places, etc. Collection of waste from community dumps. Collection of picking up of waste from final disposal sites, metal, old copies, old books, paper bags, newspapers, old greeting cards, etc., glass and plastic, containers, bottles, bags, and sheets are recyclable. Paper recycling can also preserve forests as it takes about 17 trees to make one ton of paper. Crushed glass, a cut reduces the energy required to manufacture new glasses by 50%. Studies have revealed that 7-15% to of the waste is recycled. Disposal methods. As cities are growing in size, with the rise in the population, the amount of waste generated is increasing, becoming unmanageable. The local corporations have adopted different methods for the disposal of waste, open dumps, landfills, sanitary landfills, and incineration plants. One of the important methods of waste treatment is composting. Open dumps. Open dumps refer to uncovered areas that are used to dump solid waste of all kinds. The waste is untreated, 
uncovered and not segregated, it is the breeding ground for flies, rats, and other insects that support diseases. The rainwater runoff from these dumps contaminates nearby land and water, thereby spreading diseases. Landfills. Landfills are generally located in urban areas where a large amount of waste is generated and has to be dumped in a common place in the ground. The garbage is dumped and the pit is covered, thus preventing the breeding of flies and rats. At the end of each day, a layer of soil is scattered on top of it and some mechanism, usually earth moving equipment, is used to compress the garbage, which now forms a cell. Sanitary Landfill Sanitary landfill is a depression in an impermeable soil layer that is lined with an impermeable membrane. The three key characteristics of a municipal sanitary landfill that distinguish it from an open dump are solid waste is placed in a suitably selected and prepared landfill site in a carefully prescribed manner. The waste material is separated out and compacted with appropriate heavy machinery. The waste is covered each day with a layer of compact soil. The problems with older landfills are associated with groundwater pollution, pollutants seeping out from the bottom of a sanitary landfill, very often percolate down to the groundwater aquifer, no matter how thick the underlying soil layer. Today, it is essential to have suitable bottom liners and latch collection systems along the installation of monitoring systems to detect groundwater pollution. The organic material is the buried soil waste will decompose due to the action of microorganisms. In a modern landfill, refuse is spread in thin layers, each of which is compacted by a bulldozer before the next is spread. When about three meters of refuse has been laid down, it is covered by a thin layer of clean earth, which also is compacted. At first, the waste decomposes aerobically until the aerobic microorganisms use up the oxygen that was present in the freshly placed fill. The anaerobes take over producing methane that is poisonous and highly explosive when mixed with air in concentrations between 5 and 15 percent. Providing impermeable barriers in the landfill can control the movement of gas, a venting system to collect the blocked gas and vent it to the surface while it can be safely diluted and dispersed into the atmosphere is thus a necessary component of the design of sanitary landfills. Incineration is the process of burning municipal solid waste in a properly designed furnace under suitable temperature and operating conditions. Incineration is a chemical process in which the combustible portion of the waste is combined with oxygen forming carbon dioxide and water which are released into the atmosphere. Incineration can reduce the municipal solid waste by about 90% in volume and 75% in weight. Plasma gasification. Plasma is a highly ionized or electrically charged gas. An example in nature is lightning capable of producing temperatures exceeding 12,600 degree Fahrenheit to 6,980 degree Celsius. A gasifier vessel utilizes proprietary plasma torches operating at plus 10,000 degree Fahrenheit, which corresponds to 5,540 degrees Celsius, the surface temperature of the sun. In order to create a gasification zone of up to 3,000 degree Fahrenheit to convert solid or liquid waste into a syngas. When municipal solid waste is subjected to this intense heat within the vessel, 
the waste molecular bonds break down into elemental components. The process results in elemental destruction of waste and hazardous materials. Composting. Organic matter constitutes 35 to 40 percent of the municipal solid waste generated in India. This waste can be recycled by the method of composting, one of the oldest forms of disposal. It is the natural process of decomposition of organic waste that yields manure or compost, which is very rich in nutrients. Composting is a biological process in which microorganisms, mainly fungi and bacteria, convert degradable organic waste into humps like substance. This finished product, which looks like soil, is high in carbon and nitrogen and is an excellent medium for growing plants. The process of compositing ensures the waste that is produced in the kitchens is not carelessly thrown and left to rot. It recycles the nutrients and returns them to the soil as nutrients. Apart from being clean, cheap and safe, composting can significantly reduce the amount of disposable garbage. The organic fertilizer can be used instead of chemical fertilizers and is better especially when used for vegetables. It increases the soil's ability to hold water and makes the soil easier to cultivate. It helps the soil retain more of the plant nutrients. Vermicompositing. Vermicompositing has become very popular in the last few years. In this method, worms are added to the compost. These help to break the waste and the added excreta of the worms makes the compost very rich in nutrients. Country's first aerobic composting plant was set up in Mumbai in the year 1992. In vermicomposting, all dead and dry leaves and twigs decompose and are broken down by organisms such as worms and insects and is finally broken down by bacteria and fungi to form a dark rich soil like material called compost. These organisms in the soil use the organic material as food which provides them with nutrients for their growth and activities. These nutrients are returned to the soil to be used again by trees and other plants. This process recycles nutrients in nature. This soil can be used as manure by farms and gardens. Five hours of waste management. Refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose and recycle to be followed by waste management. Refuse. Instead of buying new containers from the market, use the ones that are in the house. Refuse to buy new items, though you may think they are prettier than the ones you already have. Reduce. Reduce the generation of unnecessary waste. For example, carry your own shopping bag when you go to the market and put all your purchases directly into it. Reuse. Do not throw away the soft drink cans or the bottles. Cover them with homemade paper or paint on them and use them as pencil stands or small vases. Repurpose. The idea of repurposing involves taking items that were meant for one purpose but can be used for other ones. This is also known as upcycling in the green and environmental circles. Recycle. Use shopping bags made of cloth or jute, which can be used over and over again. Segregate your waste to make sure that it is collected and taken for recycling. Preventive measures. Proper methods of waste disposal have to be undertaken to ensure that it does not affect the environment around the area or cause health hazards to the people living there. At the household level, proper segregation of waste has to be done and it should be ensured that all organic matter is kept aside for composting, which is undoubtedly the best method for the correct disposal of this segment of the waste. In fact, the organic part of the waste that is generated decomposes more easily, attracts insects 
and causes diseases. Organic waste can be composted and then used as a fertilizer. Disposal of hospital and other medical waste requires special attention since this can create major health hazards. This waste generated from the hospitals, healthcare centers, medical laboratories and other research centers such as discarded syringes, needles, bandages, swabs, plaster and other types of infectious waste are often disposed with the regular non-infectious waste. Landfill sites should be located at a safe distance from all human settlements. Landfill sites should be well lined and walled to ensure that there is no leakage into the nearby groundwater resource. Now let's talk about the role of individuals towards taking care of the environment. Reduce the use of wood and paper products whenever possible. Manufacturing paper leads to pollution and loss of forests, which releases oxygen and takes up carbon dioxide. Try to recycle paper products and use recycled paper wherever possible. Buy consumer goods that last, keep them as long as possible and have them repaired as far as possible instead of disposing them off. Such products end up in landfills that could pollute groundwater. Buy consumer goods in refillable glass containers instead of can or throw away bottles. Use rechargeable batteries. Try to avoid asking for plastic carry bags when you buy groceries or vegetables or any other item from the market. Recycle all newspaper, glass, aluminum and other items accepted for recycling in your area. Set up a compost bin in your garden or terrace and use it to produce manure for your plants to reduce use of fertilizers. Do not litter wastes along the roads and surroundings just because the sweeper from the municipal corporation will clean up them. Take care to put trash into dustbins or bring it back home with you wherever it can be appropriately disposed of. Take care to put it into practice what you preach. Remember, environment protection begins with you. And with this, today's lecture comes to the end. Hope you have grasped the content and you definitely will contribute your bit in protecting the environment. We shall be meeting in other classroom with a new topic. Till then, goodbye and good luck.